All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today let's talk about rational exponents. And to do that, we have two skills we're working on today. The first one is we're going to explain how extending the properties of integer exponents allows us to notate radicals in terms of rational exponents. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to rewrite expressions involving radicals and radical exponents using those properties of exponents. So everything that we're doing in this lesson relies on understanding that 7.1, 7.2. You need to make sure that you understand those exponents, the rules for exponents, before we can get into our rational exponents. Well, our first vocab term today is the idea of a rational exponent. And this is a really big one. This is something that you need to understand and commit to memory. For any positive real number b and any integers m and n greater than 1, b to the power of m over n is equal to the nth root of b to the power of m. Our rational exponent is that idea of m over n. And so it relies on knowing the definition of a rational number. Well, a rational number is any number that we can represent as a fraction of integers. So in this case here, I have as part of my rational exponent definition is that m and b are integers. But I can represent any number as a rational, well, I can represent most numbers as a rational number if I can write it as a fraction of integers. So if I have the number 2, well, I can represent that as a fraction of integers because 2 is equivalent to 2 over 1. If I have 0 0.5, well, I can represent 0 0.5 as 5 tenths. Or I can simplify it down to 1 half. If I have 0 0.321, well, that's 321 thousandths. Again, I can write it as a fraction of integers. As you should have learned last year, and we'll get to again later this year, I can even represent repeating decimals, non-terminating decimals, um, as a fraction of integers, sorry. The repeating decimal 0.4 with the bar across it is 4 ninths. We'll talk more about this when we get to the idea of rational numbers later in the year. But rational exponents are when I have integer values for m and n, and I can represent them. If I have b to the power of m over n, that tells me it's the nth root of b to the power of m. Well, that idea of nth root we're coming up to now. So the cubed root, if a cubed is b, then a is the cubed root of b. That tells me that a is three equal factors to make b. So a times a times a gives me b. I can take that idea and apply it to the idea of the nth root. If a to the power of n is b for a positive integer, then a is the nth root of b. I have n equal factors. So a times itself n number of times gives me b. So I have the nth root. Last vocab term on this page is the idea of an exponential equation. This is what we are building towards in this unit. An exponential equation is a function that can be, written, can be described by an equation of the form y is a to the power of x, where a is greater than 0 and a is not 1. So thinking back about that first idea of rational exponents, there's two pieces here. If I think about for b to the power of 1 half, well, that tells me b, the squared root of b to the power of 1, which I can represent as just the square root of b. If I have that radical sign all by itself, the 2, this little 2 here, is implied. I don't need to write it. There we go. And b all by itself, the 1 is implied. So b to the power of 1 half is the same thing as the square root of b. There are two other examples there. But then I can take it and apply it to the nth root. If I have b to the power of m over n, that's the idea of the nth root of b to the power of m. So this example here helps explain it a little more. If I have 8 to the power of 2 thirds, well, that tells me that it's 8 squared and the third root, the cubed root of it. So if I take 8 squared, I get 64. And then the cubed root of 64 is 4. Different ways that we can get there. We'll practice with it in just a minute. The last term to write in for today is the idea of the power property of equality. The power property of equality tells me that if the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal. So if I have 5 to the power of x equals 5 to the power of 3, then x must be 3. If my bases are the same, the exponents are equal. Well, let's practice. The first one, these first couple problems, we're transforming um, expressions in from radical to exponential form or the other direction. 
So the first thing I see here, if I have 64 to the power of 1 half, that tells me I'm taking the second root of 64 to the power of 1. Well, in simpler forms here, I can just write the square root of 64 because those, that 2 and that 1 is implied. And I know that the square root of 64 is 8. But now let's go the other direction. If I have the square root of 42, well, that tells me 42 to the power of 1 half. And I can type this in on a calculator and get an estimated answer. But at this point here, I'm just practicing transferring forms. For the next one, this is the one that I've seen different answers for. When I look at this here, if I want to transform it from exponential form into radical form, I need to figure out what I'm taking the cubed root of. And what I see here is I have 14 and the cubed root of m. I don't have the cubed root of 14m. I've had some students that tried to tell me that this is the final answer. It's not. That one third only applies to the m. Just like if I had 14m cubed, that cubed only applies to m. So you need to make sure you know your exponent rules here. The last one, if I'm taking the square root of 45w, well, in this case, underneath that radical sign is a grouping symbol. Those are all grouped together. So this would be 45 w to the power of one half. Using my exponent rules then, I could apply it, and this is really 45 to the power of one half, and then w to the power of one half, using that property rule of exponents that we talked about, but it doesn't get me any farther, so I can leave it as this part here. When we get to chapter 10, though, we will learn how to simplify radical expressions, and so this 45 to the power of one half, or 45, the square root of, ooh, that's a five, the square root of 45, I can write in a simplified radical form. And you don't need to know this for today's lesson. I just want to give you a little heads up that it's coming. 45, the square root of 45 is really the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 5 is irrational. So I can rewrite my simplified 45 to the power of 1 half, or the square root of 45, as 3 root 5. You don't need to know that yet today, but it is coming. Now let's talk about our nth roots. So there's two different ways that you can solve these here. If you have a calculator like mine, there are buttons that you can press where we can actually find the fourth root. If I type in four and then this x root, I can make it give me a little, ooh, let's see if I can get it to show up. There we go, the fourth root of a number. But the other thing I can do is I can use what I know, that the fourth root of this is really that number, four, zero, nine, six, raised to the power of 1 fourth, which I know that I can type in on my calculator. If I type it in, I go 4096 raised to the power, just like you know how to do your exponents, that little, this one here, the little caret button to go up. And then I type in 1 fourth. I can type in 1 fourth or I can type in 0.25. Those are equivalent. And I find out that the answer is 8. If I want to check my work here, I can check. If I have 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, I get a value of 4,096. For the next one, again, there's two different ways we can do it. Let's simplify it with our writing first. So 32 to the power of 2 fifths tells me that I want the fifth root of 32 squared. Well, if I continue to simplify here, I can take 32 squared, which gives me 1024. So I want the fifth root of 1024. And again, I can find the fifth root by typing in five and then getting it to the fifth root. Or I can type in this piece here into the calculator and I find out that the fifth root, oop, there we go, fifth root of 1024 is four. Now, it is important that you can use your tools. I want you to be able to use the skills of typing in things on a calculator, but I also think it's important for you to understand the process, what we're doing and where these numbers come from. Now let's talk about that last one, the idea of the power properties of equality. Well, the power properties of equality tell me that I need to have the same base and then their exponents are gonna be the same. So if I have three to the power of X, I need to take this number and find three to the power of what gives me 243. Well, I can do that a couple different ways. I can just start typing it in on my calculator. Three times three times three. Well, that's 27, that's not enough. Times three, 81 times three. 243, all right, let's count it up. I have five, one, two, three, four, five threes. So three to the power of five is 243. Three to the power of five is, oop, 
there we go, 3 to the power of 5 is 243. So that tells me that 3 to the power of x equals 3 to the power of 5. Well then, I know from my power properties of equality that x must be equal to 5. Let's try it again with another homework example here. I have 2 to the power of x minus 1 equals 128. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out 2 to the power of what gives me 128. And a bunch of different ways I can do this. I know that 2 to the power of 7 is 128. So I get 2 to the power of x minus 1 equals 2 to the power of 7. So that tells me that x minus 1 must be equal to 7. Now using my equation solving skills, I know that x must be 8. One more practice problem here. I need to turn this stuff into 6 raised to a power. Well, what I see is I know from my negative exponent rules that this is going to be the same thing as 1 over 6 to the power of something. So I want to know how to turn 6 into 216. So 6 to the power of 3 is 216. So that tells me that 6 to the power of negative 3 is going to be 1 over 216. So my equation looks like 6 to the 8 minus x equals 6 to the negative 3. My last step here then, or almost last step, 8 minus x must be negative 3. So if I add x to both sides and then add 3 to both sides, I find out that x is 11. That power, that power property of equality tells me that if the bases are the same, then my exponents must also be equal. To practice with this, you have a homework task from page 410. It's numbers 18 through 84, multiples of 3. Many of these are quick, where you're either converting from radical form to exponent form or the other way around. So it looks like a lot, but it's not a terribly long assignment. And then number 92, which is one of my favorite types of problems, where you're analyzing student work to figure out who is right if either student is correct. When you're done, you will self-grade and report your score on Teams. Thanks, guys.